For God, I pray that you might understand your word, put it in practice. Thank you. Today, I would like to make a video uh, about one of the last articles in the website last last day about the difference between American Christianity and European Christianity. We know that 200 years ago, about Americans, Europeans came to Europe because the persecution was so severe that God made it so that the Europeans could find a way to get out from the flood that the dragon was giving to the woman. We can read that in Revelation chapter 12, where it says that the dragon sent a flood after the woman, which is the church. She went in the wilderness for 1260 years. And at this end of this papacy persecution time frame around 1798, God opened a way for them to go to a new land and to flee from the from the persecution we saw in one of these last uh, articles about American American prophecy we find this in Revelation chapter 14 where it says that uh, the second beast comes from the earth which is very interesting we find here also that in Revelation chapter 12 when it speaks about the 260 years that the woman that the earth helped the woman we find this in Revelation chapter 12 the dragon sent a flood after the woman and the earth of the woman so the earth is a place which is we saw that in the, in the you can review it you go to earthlastday.com you read read the articles and it says that uh, the earth of the woman <coughs> the waters we, we see in version chapter 14 the first beast he said the waters is uh, version 17 15 the waters is multitudes nations kingdoms and tongues so waters represent a place where there's many people. <coughs> the Bible tells us a new power would come around 1798 when the papacy and that the persecution, persec the time of persecution, and this new power would come from the earth. Like it means a place not populated. The question is which world power came on the scene, which became very powerful and came from a land which was almost not populated around 1798 where the only one that can fulfill this is America that came around 1798 and uh, so uh, the difference is that uh, Europeans have, be being, uh, uh, have been secularized since uh, Darwin today if you go to Europe almost nobody believes in God if you go to churches most churches they're, they're mostly dead and the knowledge of the Bible is very low. Most pastors believe in evolution and creation at the same time. So the gospel is not really given in its true power and true force. Although, I see that, uh, that, uh, that there are some benefits to being in Europe as a Christian compared to uh, America. America used to be the land of God. We see that in Revelation chapter 14. It says the beast that starts, that, that starts like a lamb will end up like the dragon. So the most evil persecuting power will become America. Yet this power be started as the Christian power, the land where God chose to bless and to prosper for the sole purpose to give the gospel to the world. Sometimes Americans say that they are a great nation, they are big, they are powerful, and they take the glory to themselves. This is an uh, abomination to God because God says that uh, uh, all sins come from Him. And when God blesses it, there is a purpose. America is blessed for the only purpose to bring the the gospel to the world, which they're doing. This is the most missionary nation in the world is America. <coughs> Number two is is uh, South Korea. But the problem is that the land will become like a dragon. We see that already happening. The abuse of power, the spying on everybody, the laws, the rules, everything, the the loss of freedom, and uh, the Bible says it will end up as being extremely persecuting. Very interesting. Interesting that America is uh, condemning and criticizing some countries where there's no freedom. Very interesting. The Bible tells us the country that's going to be the least freedom ever will be America in the future. An Adventist pioneer, A.T. Jones, he is not inspired. God gave him and Wagner the message of righteousness by faith that we find in version 18, verse 1 to 4. And he has a quote that says, those who live here in America will soon, soon wish they were not living here. 
because the persecution will be the strongest, the most fierce, the most intense in America. And the Christians that live over there will suffer the most. So the difference is that uh, if, you go, if you go back like 10, 20 years ago in America, there was much more Bible knowledge that we see today. That, that the, the same things that we see in Europe, we see in America. One of the big scenes that I gave in the channel, if you go back to the video that's called Why God Sent the Coronavirus, we see that people don't believe in absolute truth anymore. They believe that they can make up the truth. They can choose what is truth. They can invent the truth, which is abomination. They, human beings today make themselves to be gods. And uh, they, they, it's an offense to God, such a thing. Christians do the same today. They claim they can, by their reasoning powers, understand and explain the Bible. Well, Jesus says that only through the Holy Spirit we can understand the Word of God. And unless God enlightens us, gives us power, we cannot understand anything in the Word of God. But today in America, one of the big problems, that's why we see the fall, is that people don't believe this anymore. They don't believe we can be enlightened only by the Holy Spirit. We, you can, by your reasoning power, understand, claim, and decide what is truth. This is abomination. Human beings today make themselves to be God. And this is why in the video I... I claim that the coronavirus, one of the reasons why God sent it, is because this is a very, very big offense to God. Human beings, which are nobody, the Bible says that we are like grass, now they claim that they can decide truth. The Bible tells us truth comes from God. He says, the, your word is truth, the Bible is truth. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the truth. So when a human being, which is only a creator, claims to be God, claims to be able to decide truth, to uh, to explain the truth without the Holy Spirit is total abomination. This is very offensive to God. Uh, so then one of the reasons. Then one of the other reasons we see the fall of America compared to European is that one thing Europeans have better than Americans is the there's no legalism. Legalism is much lower over there, and uh, what I saw in America, which is, was not before, there's still is it's always been a legalist country, but this is is going through immense and discussing proportions today. People don't realize what they're doing. They're just following rules, a bunch of rules, and this is not going to save them. This is worse than the Jewish nation. This is becoming worse than the Pharisees, which were, which were so offensive to God that God has to kill them. When Jesus died on the cross, Jerusalem was, was destroyed 70 AD, about 40 years after Jesus died on the cross. Many of the Pharisees that, that uh, condemned Jesus died in the siege of Titus. This was the, the punishment of God came 40 years later. Because God is very merciful, God is very slow to anger. So his judgment doesn't come by the way. God waits to see if the person changes. Ellen G. White says that uh, everybody has a limit, every nation and every individual. When we pass that limit of God's forbearance, God's mercy, then the judgment will fall. Nobody knows the limit of America. Nobody knows the limit of every individual. But we know when they pass, then judgment fall. We saw the Jewish people. They were becoming extremely evil before the, the coming of Jesus. There was a lot of violence all over the place, a lot of lying, a lot of corruption. And then the destruction of Jerusalem happened. So we see that happening in America. This legalism is very offensive to God. There is no sin in the Bible more offensive than legalism or pride. Legalism is someone claiming that they are good, that they can do things, that they are goodness in themselves, and they can commend themselves to God. This is abomination. The Bible says there is none good, not one. All have turned away. We have become unprofitable. And when a human being claims to be good, there is the, they are servants of Satan. Satan claims to be good. Satan claims to be something. He's not. He claims to be God. So people are lying, uh, and we see the legalism, people just going by rules, not understanding. It's not because we follow rules that we make it to heaven. It's a righteousness that is not inherent in human beings. God, God only has righteousness. And when one claims to be righteous, they are deceived, they are lying to God, they are condemned, they are not converted. So this is uh, it's getting worse and worse. This is a very, very, very big sin. This is an immense sin that's going on in America. The legalism there, people are just going by rules. They're not. The love of, of the of the neighbor is gone. So that's some of the things that's going to happen. So that's one thing that European Christians don't have. There's much more freedom over there. Not that maybe they understand the 
Rogers and Buffett method, but because they are more lenient. So in a way, they're going to be judged much less harsher than America, which has so much light. The land of light, America, which has so much about light, like no other country has ever had, will be judged harsher. Like Paul says, let no many of you being be teachers, because you will receive the, the greater condemnation. So uh, this is a plus in Europe, that's the, the, the much less judgment of others, much less legalism, but the problem is much less uh, evangelism, much less knowledge of the Bible. <coughs> See, here is a snapshot of the difference of the two continents, and we see that the world is, uh, is perishing, the whole world is falling into, into legalism, and we saw what happened to the Jews. They thought themselves to be good, they were praying in the, in the, they were running to the first seats, they were praying in the, in the places, um, and, and wanting everyone to look at them, how holy they were, and they, 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 they really believed, the Pharisees really believed in their heart, they were good people. That's the big problem. The deception is so great, and we see that in the message of Laodicea, Revelation chapter 3. You are in need of nothing. Laodicea claims to be in need of nothing, to be good, to be closed, to, to be apathetic. This is one of the scenes of today too. One of the great, uh, of the great uh, offense to God is apathy. People claiming that they don't need anything. We see in Revelation chapter 3 that Jesus says he wants to vomit. Clearly vomit. Can you imagine Jesus vomiting on people that claim to, that they don't want anything? So the truth is, we, we, uh, the, Laodicea, the, the, the Pharisees, they are naked. They are blind. They don't see the condition. Naked. They have no righteousness at all. They claim to be good, they do everything, they obey every rule of the government and they obey every rule of the church. Yet Jesus says they're naked, they, don't, they, they are totally worthless and when the judgment comes, they will not be entering heaven. Jesus will have to tell them, I never knew you. I never knew you because they always claimed to be themselves, something, when they were nothing. And then they, they never felt the need of the righteousness of Jesus. And this is why, when Jesus comes back, they say, I never knew you. Because they were always claiming to be good, always claiming to follow the rules, and they follow the rules. The Paul said in the book of uh, in the gospel in the New Testament, he says that he followed every rule. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisee. He was perfect. He was blameless, according to the laws of the Bible. Paul was blameless. Yet God seen saw him as a wicked person. God, Paul was very wicked, but he followed the rules. So, earthly people can see you as a good person, and you can be extremely wicked in the eyes of God. What matters is what God, God sees, the eyes of God. Paul says all these things, following all the rules and everything, he gave up so he could receive the righteousness of Jesus and receive the power that comes only from God. And it's a peace message that we, cannot, we don't have to do anything to be saved. God gives us everything. But then as we come to the point of realizing that there is no good thing in us, we will still be legalists trying to follow rules and we will never enter heaven. Thank you, Father God, for this message. I pray that you bless people listening, that you prosper, heal, give them your brother righteousness, Father God, help them to understand all the truths of the stranger's message and come out from the creatures of Babylon. You said the word says in Revelation 18, 17, that Babylon will be burned, Babylon will be destroyed. You call people out of these churches because the plagues will be falling. It's like right now we see in the war with Ukraine and Russia, they're asking people to leave the cities because the, the cannons and Rockets will be falling. But the same thing will happen to Babylon. You're asking people to leave because the cannons, the rockets, the artillery will be falling on these churches to be destroyed. You will see that in Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. Come out of my people, that you pardon take care of our sins, and that you receive not of our plagues. The plagues are the seven last plagues. We will kill millions of people all over the earth. Thank you, Father God. In the name of Jesus. Amen.